What's up, Internet Fit Fam? You guys want workout and meal plan tips? Because I got workout and meal plan tips for days. And I'm down to give them to you for free. You're welcome. First, the workout. How do we optimize it to get the most out of it? The answer is hella complicated, stupidly detailed, and very specific to each person. But we can cover some general details that a lot of people miss so you can get a start really making a difference in your routine. Number one, maximize your output. When a lot of people structure their workout plans, they tend to be very slapdash about what exercises they do and at what point, not only in each day, but over the entire week. What you want to do is think about your needs, your goals, and your time, and start by picking some exercises that will address those needs and goals. If you don't have enough exercises to fill up your time, feel free to start considering secondary goals and needs, and picking exercises based on those to fill up the rest of your time. If you have too many, it's time to start whittling down some. The easiest way to do that is to start with redundant exercises and pull them out first. This could be things like removing one of the two from standing barbell bicep curl and standing dumbbell bicep curl if you wrote down both. Next, find the exercises you find hardest from each muscle group and keep those. Usually, the reason you find them hard is because you're weak when it comes to those particular movement patterns, and strengthening them will likely benefit you the most. Then, you just need to arrange them so you can get the most out of each workout while letting any muscles that might be hit multiple times get between 24 and 48 hours of rest between workouts. This will ensure you can give the most in those workouts, allow decent recovery between workouts, and stimulate the muscles sufficiently throughout the week. Two, have a plan. Stick to the plan. Once you've set up your workouts, stick to the plan for four to six weeks. Life will try to get in the way, and sometimes it will be a legit issue that you can't work around. But hear me when I say this, the vast majority of things that come up are bullshit excuses you're making to cheat yourself of the transformation you can achieve. See, the body and mind are surprisingly good at maintaining homeostasis. They both just want to live easy and chill with things in balance. If you try to do something new, the first response your body and mind will have is to revolt. They'll try to switch things back. The workout will be hard and you'll want to quit. Your body will get sore at first and you'll want to stop. You'll not like some of the exercises and want to go back to the old stuff. Any and every opportunity to derail your scheduled workout will be accepted by your mind. All of this and much much more is the mind and body's attempt to go back to how things used to be. Do not let that happen. Keep to the schedule, stick to the script, allow your body the appropriate amount of time to establish a new habit, and just as importantly, allow your body time to improve at these exercises by doing them religiously for at least the four to six weeks mentioned. Okay, next, your meals. There are two categories of people when it comes to this subject. There are those who want to put on muscle or improve their performance, and those who want to lose fat. We'll refer to them using the basic gain and cut categories. Simply put, if you want to gain, eat. If you want to cut, eat, but eat a little less. To start, everyone will need to know their basic basal metabolic rate, or BMR. Tons of these exist online, but I'll put a link to a reliable one in the description below. This will tell you how much energy you burn in a day. Why is this helpful? Well, if you're looking to gain, you need to eat in a surplus. That's an amount over your BMR. This is because if you only eat exactly what your BMR is, you're eating enough to just maintain what you have. That's it, nothing changes. If you wanna cut, you'll need to eat in a calorie deficit. That means less than your BMR. And this works because the energy you burn over what you eat is going to end up being burned from energy stores in the body. And that's how weight loss functions. Both categories will need appropriate amounts of protein in their diets. By appropriate, I mean significantly more than what you're eating now. After all, protein is more satiating than other macronutrients, so it can help both building of muscle as well as appetite for those looking to cut while also maintaining muscle mass. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find any studies on younger demographics. But what I did find was a 2019 study on older populations, around 50 to 70 years of age, that found that, quote, dietary protein intakes were significantly lower in older age groups, with up to 46% of the oldest adults not meeting the protein intake recommendation, end quote. Seeing as this generation raised the younger generation I'm attempting to talk to here, I can infer that without any intervention from those in the evidence-based fitness community, they carry similar eating habits learned from their elders and are also under the appropriate protein intake. With that in mind, take a look at what you currently eat versus your activities and goals and decide if you need to up the amounts and by how much. Then figure out how much fat you should be getting in your daily diet. Around 30% of the total calories eaten should be a good place to start, and you can tweak it up or down based on your preferences and how your body responds to the diet over time. The rest of the calories can be allocated to carbs. The last big tip, pick meals you like that have good flavor and that can work with your macros and prep in bulk. Pick a day in the week and prep a whole bunch of food. This will allow you to have a lot of food on hand that meets your dietary needs, which should cut down on the urge to go out and eat and will cut down any work you'd have to do later in the week to make it, which might deter you from cooking in the first place. And that's it. It's a basic rundown, but it should really get you started. References to some of the studies used or mentioned in this video will be in the description below, along with my social media links. So make sure you head down there and follow me, especially on Instagram. If you guys are interested in something a bit more in depth, let me know in the comment section below. I'm not opposed to making this a series, so if you guys want it, I'd be happy to bring it. Also, like and subscribe to let me know that you enjoyed the video and hit the bell so you can be part of the galaxy and be notified of all of our future videos as soon as they come out. I really appreciate every one of you stars out there. It means a lot to me, never forget that. And of course, stay shining, because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.